What's going on guys? My name is Tommy. Welcome back to the channel. It's time once again for another episode of Wednesday Afternoon Worship Today. At the request of sometimes we call him Justicar5, sometimes we call him Archon. We're cracking open for like two seconds. Inner Sea Gods. Mostly this one's a homebrew for an Imperial Lord. Specifically, we're looking at She of Ebon Wings herself, Kelenahat. If you guys are liking what you're seeing, like, subscribe, ding the bell. Remember, we're playing Final Fantasy real soon, and if you'd like to join us, there is, of course, a link for that in the description. Patronage at any tier gets you possibly multiple entries and gets your requests to the front of a super long line now. This episode of Wednesday Afternoon Worship was brought to you in part by Archon. They who requested it. Thank you, my friend. I'm sorry there was a snafu on your name. But now, hey, we know. And knowing is half the battle. So, saith the lawful good god of spies. Let's dive in. So, Kelnahat is an Archon Imperial Lord. An Imperial Lord of Spies, Stealth, and the Gathering of Intelligence, who again is known as She of Ebon Wings. Her followers use Guile, Subterfuge, and Shadow Magic to break into evil bastions and return with valuable information. That's all we got! That's literally the end of Paizo content for this one, and you know what? That's pretty disappointing to me. Because who needs the rogue more than lawful good, right? In a very meta sense, generally speaking, the paladins aren't so good at sneaky, and also there are some paladin codes that get a little rigid, right? Though sometimes I definitely feel that that can be, you know, a gross misinterpretation of what a paladin is. Nevertheless, of all the Imperial Lords I've ever seen in my career, Helena Hutt deserves more, I think, the most because most of the rogue gods don't fall in this corner of the alignment chart. This is basically the goddess of Batman. And we all love Batman, right? Exactly. Of course. Anywho, with no further ado, in we go. Let's talk about what we do have, mechanically speaking. Kelenahat's alignment, of course, as an Archon, is Lawful Good. Her domains are Darkness, Good, Knowledge, and Law, with the subdomains Archon, Good, and Law, Espionage, Knowledge, Moon, Night, and Thought. Her favorite weapon, the Short Sword, and her symbol is a Short Sword and Moon. Now, onto that sweet homebrew. If you think you can do it better, throw it in the comments. To perform Kelenahat's homebrew obedience, spend an hour, either alone or with allies, going over any intelligence you possess about a common enemy. At the end of this hour, either make plans to immediately act upon this enemy using the intelligence you possess, or give your findings to someone with the power to do so. If you possess no such intelligence, instead, meditate on Kelenahat's holy symbol, focusing on keeping your mind as blank as possible. In return, you gain a plus four sacred bonus on stealth checks made in areas of dim light. Sentinel boons, it's animate rope three times a day, alter self twice a day, or adjustable disguise once a day. At 16th level, effects that detect alignment detect you as evil, unless their casters succeed at a DC 10 plus half your hit dice plus intelligence will save. A casting of detect good, if you are good, for example, or casting of detect evil, will trigger the save. You can choose for a target to detect you as your true alignment instead, with no action. And at 20th level, when an opponent tries to detect your alignment and passes the save, as an immediate action, you can cause their body to be racked with pain, dealing a number of d6 of damage equal to your sneak attack or 5d6, whichever is higher. This causes whatever spell or effect detected you to be immediately dispelled, and your opponent must make a will save at 10, plus half your hit dice, plus your intelligence, or be staggered for 1d4 rounds. This, of course, is a mind-affecting effect. Evangelist boons its shadow weapon three times a day, shadow anchor twice a day, or displacement once a day. At 16th level, we're gonna bring some 3.5 shadow magic back into this one. Robin, you out there? This one's for you, bud. Any illusion spells you cast that are only partially real, such as shadow evocation, are 5% more real per caster level, to a maximum of 120% real. This can cause spells to deal additional damage, summon creatures to have additional hit points, and so forth, in excess of their normal maximum. So a summoned creature with Shadow Conjuration could have 20% more hit points and do 20% more damage. 
and a 20th level, by spending a full round action prior to the casting of a spell, think Gather Power from a Kineticist, you can infuse it with shadowy energy. If you do so, treat it as if it were a partially real illusion spell. The spell manifests as a shadowy, translucent version of its normal appearance, and hostile targets the spell effects must roll twice against the spell and take the lower result. Exalted Boons, it's Expeditious Retreat three times a day, Blur twice a day, Blink once a day. At 16th level, any time you are 10 feet away from an area of dim light, you gain a natural armor bonus to AC equal to a fourth of your hit dice rounded down. You also gain the Hide in Plain Sight ability while within such an area because we can't all be Shadow Dancers, right? Really, if you're worshipping Kellen Hot, you probably were a Shadow Dancer. I digress. At 20th level, as an immediate action, when an opponent fails a perception check to notice you, you may make an attack of opportunity against them. If you do, you may move 5 feet after the attack resolves, and we all know stealth is part of movement, right? Boom. Off you go, disappear, and shadow dancers eat your heart out. Paladins, however, don't eat your heart out. That sounds really painful. You guys need some love too. Of course, Kelenahad is lawful good. Of course that means it's time for a homebrew paladin code. It goes as follows. I am the eyes and ears of good. I will never falter when called upon to act in the service of those on the side of good. I do not kill without cause. It is my job to make the battles easier for those on the battlefield, not to act as judge. The wicked will answer for their crimes in battle or in defeat. I leave no trace of my passage through enemy-held land. Being caught is one thing. Leaving a trail back to my allies is worse. If I must fight, I will end the fight quickly and cleanly. My purpose lies not in the blade, and time spent away from my purpose may cost lives. Finally, the Plane of Shadow is a place that holds evil, but is not evil unto itself. I will learn to see the difference, and teach that difference to others. And you know, if you teach that difference to enough others, maybe you roll like 4d6 at character creation, I don't know, confer with your GM. As of Planar Adventures, Kalanahat might grant a one-time boon. For Kalanahat, I see no reason to not, you know, throw down a permanent plus two bonus to dexterity. Because, you know, that's what we're about here. In any case, Kalanahat represents one of the things I'm saddest about with the end of Legacy Pathfinder, that being that there are a lot of deities in the world who are not fully fleshed out. I fully believe, fully cross my fingers, Paizo if you're listening, my birthday's in a little less than a month, hook a brother up, we should get something along the lines of what Book of the Damned was for the Imperial Lords. I'd even be happy with it if it was literally just called Book of the Undamned, you know, in such a way that I don't have to homebrew these, not that I certainly do not enjoy it, but official content for a massive amount of fightable things in the world flavorful things in the world would go a long way. I'd be happy with just a picture of Kelenahat, which does not exist. We're just rocking that holy symbol. But I can think of a million Imperial Lords who are really cool, really flavorful, or even from planet Earth in the case of Keranos, and probably more the farther you dig knowing Pathfinder, that would look real good with some official content. So fingers crossed on that book of the undamned, nevertheless. GMing for a character who worships Kelenahat may feel like the opposite of what they normally are because when most people think rogues, I imagine most folks are either thinking like CG in it for the memory or CE in it for the stabbery. Well, this is the exact opposite. These guys aren't robbing and killing for fun. No, these guys are robbing and killing because it's sometimes the right thing to do. One well-placed death somewhere one bit of information pulled from one person given to another can tip the side in a battle. We all know this. I'm sure there have been several times in a lot of people's careers where they've played sneaky characters that have had to steal information from a general, even just look at a map, take a picture in a more modern setting and take it back to HQ, so HQ knows how to deploy its troops that much better. That's super important and it's a lot of fun. If I were to play a character who worshipped Kelenahat, that's the game I'm looking for. Like Assassin's Creed, but without the urge to walk up and just shank somebody for no reason. GMing for these guys. Again, we've talked about GMing for an all-rogue game, and in the playtest, follow this card right up here, we have an all-rogue party. Come check it out. But an all-rogue, all-lawful good party 
is an entirely different thing. These guys don't shout Deus Volt, no, they whisper it as they sneak in and get the information necessary for people to actually shout Deus Volt and go charging in and survive it because of you, the party. It really helps that massive big war campaign setting work out because these guys probably are never on the battlefield. Speaking of on the battlefield, as a final note, Kelenahat of course is an Imperial Lord, which means she lands probably somewhere between CRs 21 and 29, is a fightable, killable entity in Pathfinder. Do we have stats for her today? No. Frankly, we don't really talk about like the AC of the killable deities when we go about these videos. If I were to homebrew a monster from front to back, well, you know, I like to talk about my reasons for giving someone an astronomically high armor class, but in any case, what do you guys think about Kelenahat? Have we worshipped her or any other obscure imperial lords? How has being lawful and being sneaky worked out for you in your campaigns? And hey, who do you want to see next? Throw it in the comments, sign here, drink the Kool-Aid, because next week by patron request, we're talking about a god who's not a god, who might be a god, depends on your perspective. Yeah, you got it right, it's Razmir. See you then.